Therapeutics is focused on neurodegenerative diseases, and people on the executive team, like many Americans, are personally affected by those who have suffered from Alzheimer's, which is the most common form of dementia, and affects many people uh, every year. So with me is Dr. Adrian Hepner, the President and Chief Medical Officer of Koya, and also Arun Swaminathan, uh, the Chief Business Officer. Um, so tell me about your company. Like, do you want to start, um, Doctor, and just explain the company, what you're doing, and what your mission? Absolutely. First of all, thank you for having us here. And as you said, many people suffer from these diseases of the nervous system. That's what these diseases are. Diseases that are chronic in terms of they keep progressing and progressing until people have fatal outcomes or they cannot function anymore. So, and what we are doing is basically approaching a new way to attack these diseases because regardless of the origin, what is causing the disease, and some of them are diseases that we read in the papers every single day, like Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of dementia, or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig disease, that we read about that all the time, Parkinson's disease that we know, so things that are, are common around us, and we know at least one person that has been affected by these or a person that is close to someone affected by these. Yeah, well, especially Alzheimer's. I feel like myself and everybody I know has had a parent that has had Alzheimer's yes. or you know, a grandparent or something. So That's very, a, very yes. common. Yeah. Yes. And it's the most common form of dementia and growing in numbers exponentially mm -hmm. year after year. So what we do at Koya is understand, first of all, how these diseases evolve, how they progress. And we have identified that inflammation Neuroinflammation in these cases is the main driver of the progression and the severity of these diseases. And there is a couple of particular cells in our, in our body that are, are called regulatory T cells that were discovered not so long ago, in 1995, by a doctor called, a Japanese doctor called Shimon Sakaguchi, that we are very proud to have in our scientific advisory board. He works with us we have identified that these cells do not work properly. So inflammation goes up, the disease gets more severe, the disease progresses, and we all know what these diseases do to every people that is affected and the families around. So we have different products, and I believe Arun may expand on that, on what we are trying to do with our development programs. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. So there are some drugs on the market for Alzheimer's, I know in particular, um, but they don't seem to really help, maybe slow things down a little bit, but don't really help that much. How is what you're doing different? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. And I think you, you said it, you know, there isn't many options for these patients. These neurodegenerative diseases, really what they are, you know, that's a medical term, but what they are is we all have nerve cells. And these nerve cells send electrical signals that tell the body, the muscle to work, the brain to work. When this gets messed up, mm -hmm. that's when you start seeing these diseases that are called neurodegenerative. It can manifest itself as physical deterioration, which happens in the case of Lou Gehrig's disease, which we, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, Lou Gehrig, of course, was a famous baseball player after whom this disease is named. He played for the New York Yankees. His career was cut short at its peak because he couldn't physically not only play, he deteriorated to the point where he passed away when he was 37. Mm. So today, after all these years, there's still not many choices for these patients, despite all the progress science has made. And at Koya, we are extremely passionate about trying to make as much of a difference for these patients as we can. And we're doing this, as uh, Adrian, as Dr. Hepner uh, explained, we're doing this through addressing this thing called inflammation. Mm -hmm. now, everybody knows when you have a swelling in the hand, that's inflammation. But the same process, inflammation is generally not a good thing. Mm -hmm. When that happens at the nerve cell levels, it starts destroying this communication. Think of it like a spark plug misfiring, right? When a spark plug starts misfiring or stops creating the electricity, the engine stops working or starts shutting down. The same thing happens. So our unique approach to your question is that we believe that by fundamentally addressing this inflammation, 
we can really alter the course of disease, whether it is a physical decline that you see with ALS or Lou Gehrig's or a mental decline that you see with diseases like Alzheimer's or combinations that you sometimes see with diseases like Parkinson's, mm. right? So we, we really believe that's what separates us from the approaches everybody is taking. Uh, we have seen initial data that Dr. Hepner can talk to more about in Lou Gehrig's disease which gives us a lot of excitement. Uh, it is early data. We have to do a lot more work before we know that it truly works. But what we're seeing really makes us believe that maybe we can make a difference for these Yeah, patients. maybe there's something yeah. here. So thank you for teaming me up, Arun, because I was just gonna ask about that data. So explain what you were studying and what have you seen so far with us? So we have very encouraging clinical data from small studies, initial studies, in two diseases. One of them, Lou Gehrig, as Arun was saying, Lou Gehrig disease, also called as ALS, or known as ALS, mm -hmm. and Alzheimer's dementia, which is, again, the most common form of dementia. The data with patients with Lou Gehrig disease, we show over a long period of time, and keep in mind that the long period of time for these patients may be counted in months, because most patients died within two and five years after the initiation of the symptoms. This is a devastating, catastrophic disease. So we found that over the course, for example, of the first six months of our treatment, patients stopped their decline. After how much time? After the first six months, first they months. stopped their decline, meaning they did not decline as you usually expect. We use a scale which is very complex, but we use a scale that is, has a score in points, and every point down mm -hmm. means patients are losing function. For example, losing one point in this scale may mean that the patient that is able to walk with a cane is not able to walk at all, just one point. Okay. And usually patients decline with this scale at a rate of one point per month. Mm -hmm. We show stopping this decline over the first six months of treatment. But we wanted to go further, and we continue the study for additional six months. And then we show also a minimal decline compared to what is seen every single day with or without the available treatments. The safety was very good, so patients tolerated the drug very well. And of course, as Arun said, it's our initial studies, but this is very encouraging. We are working fast and furious in our next study, which is hopefully going to demonstrate the safety and efficacy, which is what the FDA requires right. to review a product mm -hmm. and hopefully approve a product, the safety and efficacy of what we call COYA302, which is a combination of two biologic drugs to hopefully help these patients that, as you said, what they have out there is limited in the help they may get. Yeah. Now this ALS treatment that you're testing right now, like best case scenario, when might this be in the hands of physicians to um, prescribed patients? No, I mean, it, obviously there's a lot of steps. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of regulatory steps. Uh, we have to get approval from the FDA, from the European medical agencies and so on. Uh, but what we're hoping to do, as Dr. Hepner mentioned, is to initiate that bigger study uh, pretty soon. Okay. Uh, and we will have to discuss with the regulatory okay. agencies to kind of understand what that path forward is. But optimistically, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what we hear back in 2025, 2026, okay. one could potentially see a path forward. Now, a lot has to be answered right. between now yeah. and then for that to happen. And I've covered enough of these stories. I know things can kind of get, you know, side, you know, whatever. So, but, you know, best but, case but scenario. But your, your be. question, the path for a disease like ALS is much faster because the uh, unmet need is so high. That's these right. patients really don't have... And there's really choices. nothing there, so they might speed and nothing up. nothing has perfectly fixed the problem mm -hmm. yet, so... There's always going to be a faster path for those kinds of drugs if the data supports it. Yeah. Now, I'm just curious, inflammation, like what made you decide to kind of go with the problem that way? And how has that turned out to be such a promising way to uh, protect these neurodegenerative diseases? Well, I think, I, and we need to give the credit to that, to Dr. Stanley Appel. Okay. So Dr. Appel, who is in my opinion, the father of modern ALS, but beyond ALS in neuroinflammation, he 
was the head of the Department of Neurology at Houston Methodist in Houston, Texas, where our headquarters are, I think there is where everything started. Mm. So based on the results of the data that he generated in preclinical studies, meaning the studies that are non-humans in animals or in the laboratory, plus initial work in, in patients, he basically, driven by this very young concept at that time of neuroinflammation, he identified that these cells, the regulatory T cells, are not working in these patients. So after that, they did, okay, what can we do to make these cells back to work and remain working to hopefully really make this disease not as devastating as it is, hopefully make this this is something that stops progressing. Yeah. So, and we are working also in Alzheimer's disease. I can tell you that that data, I think, looks also very encouraging. I cannot talk much about the data because it's going to be presented at an international conference in the middle of this month. Okay. So hopefully after that, we can make the data publicly available. But we are very enthusiastic about what we have. We continue working very hard working also with key opinion leaders, with specialists in the field, because we want to learn also from them the best way to continue moving this forward to hopefully help the community. Yeah, any final thoughts, Arun? Yeah, and uh, to add on Alzheimer's, as you said at the start of this, every, all of us know somebody who's affected mm -hmm. by Alzheimer's. It affects six million people in the United States today and millions and millions globally. We've all heard the stories. We know people who can't recognize their children. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, you know, it's a very devastating disease. Mm -hmm. And we're really excited that we believe and we're hope, as uh, Dr. Hepner said, we'll have data in a couple of weeks that we have promised there as well. So again, just to reiterate at COYA, we have not only the scientific foundation of real stellar people in this field, but also people who are personally either directly affected or their family members affected. And that drives everything we do in yeah. the company. That really drives it. It kind of makes you get and, through those, those like long That's what keeps us going. And <laughs> we feel day. very hopeful and encouraged yeah. from all the uh, results we're seeing with our product. Well, I hope you come back and update as your clinical trials go on and let us know how that's going because it's a very important work and affects a lot of families. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for having us thank here. You. Thank you. <laughs>